By the year 2025, the candle industry is expected to reach nearly $5 billion. Now, since you are here, I'm assuming that you might want to be part of that. Maybe you already are, or maybe you are considering starting your business in 2022. Hi, everyone. My name is Wade. I'm the owner of Black Tie Barn Candle Company. I run this YouTube channel as well to help other candle makers or perhaps other business owners in both making and selling candles. Now, while I've been running my candle business for quite some time, I wanted to do a video that if I were going to be starting my candle business soon, how I would go about doing so. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you all for being here. I hope you enjoy the video, and I would love to have you around more often. So if you are interested in any other related content, please subscribe below and give this video a thumbs up by clicking that like button just to show your support. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So as I mentioned, that recent study shows that the candle industry is growing every single year. And so is the demand for local and handmade products. Now in this video, I'm gonna break this down into three main sections and each section is gonna have various parts. First, we're briefly gonna talk about making of the products. Next, we're gonna talk about the branding and promoting of those products. And then third and finally, we'll talk about more of the business side of things. But it's only reasonable that if we are discussing hand poured or handmade candles that we should start with the making of the products first. Now, first and foremost, this really depends on whether or not you are somewhat experienced with candle making and already have a platform to begin, or if you are literally just starting from scratch. Now, the first thing I would do, particularly if I was just starting with candle making from scratch, is fundamentals of candle making. I would start with my essential candle making supplies. I have some resources and links in the description below and some other videos talking about this type of step if this is where you are beginning. Point here is, is just to get started making. Now, if you are just starting out, you haven't really made any candles first, dip your toes into the water first. You don't wanna just jump right in. Get comfortable, but get making. Now, speaking about making, we're not gonna talk about all the details in this particular video. I have other videos about candle making and I have other resources to help you out as well as many more coming. But again, this is if I were to start a candle business in 2022, this is what I would do, not necessarily a detailed instructional approach how to make a candle in this video. With that being said, let's talk about what I would do, again, if I were starting off in 2022, how I would approach the making. So let's talk a little bit about materials and ingredients. My first tip here would be to limit your materials. I would spend time focusing on your three core ingredients and I would do them in this particular order. Number one is I would pick your jar. Now that might surprise you. Many of you might think, well, I should probably start with my wax or my oils, my fragrances. I would recommend starting with your jar because if your goal here is to start making candles and then build a business around those candles, the first thing that customers see is your candle, the jar itself. That's the first thing that customers have a first impression of, and that is what is going to start building your brand. Many waxes will work differently in different sized jars. So some waxes work great in smaller jars, some in larger jars. So my advice here would be to pick the jar that you want to use first. What is the look you're going for? What is the size you're after? Start with the jar first, and then we can move on. Now, speaking of the jar, some of you may be wondering, should I start with one jar, two sizes? If it was me, I would choose between one of two options. I would either pick one jar and one jar only, and that one size should be kind of a medium sized candles. I wouldn't do anything lower than a six ounce candle and I wouldn't do anything too large, anything over say a 14 ounce candle. Somewhere right in the middle, seven to 12 ounces would be a good range to start if you're gonna offer only one size candle. The reason is, is you want something that is enough of a candle that is profitable to you, but it's enough of a candle for the customer as well. And that is typically gonna be your mid-range candle sizes. Your larger jars can be too expensive starting off, and then your smaller jars can just be tough to build a business around. Because they are smaller, they don't have as much of a market as kind of your middle size range candles. However, the other option is to start with two sizes. Now, this is a little bit more of a challenge and a little bit more daunting, especially if you are brand new and not as experienced with candle making. But the reason I would start with two potentially is so you can offer two different sizes to give your customers not only an option, but also a chance for you to upsell a product. For example, if you offer both a 12 ounce candle and a six ounce 10, then you have the opportunity to appeal to not only two different shoppers, but you can also run promotions. For example, if you buy three or four candles, you can add on one of these six ounce tens for free. So you generate a little bit of an add on, a little bit of a buzz uh, around that promotion. Which route you decide to go there is totally up to you. The second core ingredient I would focus on then is wax. Now, I don't wanna to spend too much time here because this video would be absurdly long if we talked about everything to consider with waxes. I do have another video on this channel that takes a look and reviews five of the most common waxes that a lot of candle makers begin with. And I will be doing future videos on reviewing some other popular waxes, as well as some of my favorite or go-to waxes 
in the near future. Just to briefly say, I would sample various waxes. Now do this according to your budget and according to your time, but I would pick some of the most common and popular candle suppliers. And again, I have resources on those. And I would just start off with a few samples, maybe 10 pound slabs or bags of each different wax and just to start experimenting. What do you like working with? What did you find the easiest to work with? What did you have the most success to wicking? This is really gonna come down to testing and personal preference. There are a lot of waxes to choose from and it's really up to you. Third and finally, choose your fragrance oils. Fragrance oils selection is extremely important, but I would not recommend choosing fragrance oils before you choose your wax. It is much easier to change oils than it is waxes, so get your wax decided on first. You can change it later, but it's much easier to swap out and change fragrance oils if you're struggling to get certain fragrance oils to work with your wax. There are a lot of fragrance suppliers and manufacturers and distributors, and they have hundreds of thousands of fragrance oil options, so you're never gonna have a lack of opportunity to try different oils. So after you've determined your vessel and your wax, now you can start dialing in your fragrance oils. Now, when it comes to fragrance oils, how many would I carry starting off? Probably somewhere in the range of six to eight. This will be enough to cover a few different basic categories of types of fragrance oils, and it's enough of a selection to get started for sure. And not carrying too many will make it much easier for you getting started, not only to perfect those candles and test those products, but also working on branding and labeling, stocking your inventory, and generating promotion around those products. If you're going to start with six or eight fragrance oils, what type of fragrance oils should you start with? So as I briefly touched on, I would start with a variety and a few different categories. I'm gonna give you seven different categories that I would pull one fragrance oil in each one of these categories, and then maybe you can just add another personal favorite. Your favorite citrus, floral, woodsy, sweet, classy or sophisticated, and then classic. Now in the description below, I'll leave a few examples of what I mean of different scents in each of these categories to help get you started. And you're gonna find a lot of different options in each of these categories. So I would start by just sampling these as well. Now you can find a lot of suppliers that offer one ounce samples, just so you can get an idea of what type of fragrance you like first. And then once you've kind of narrowed that down, then you can start testing some oils in each of these categories before finally settling on one or two of your favorites in each one of these categories. And that is what I would start off with early on. Now I did mention I would start with seven categories and I only mentioned six. The seventh category would be something that is unique to you and your business. If one of your fragrances can also be something you find extremely unique or rare to you, then that is also a nice touch, a nice fragrance to add to your collection. But again, I would start somewhere in the range of six to eight to begin with, and that is plenty for you to launch your business. Now, with that being said, the next thing I would do would probably have a plan to roll out one or two new fragrances every quarter. So maybe every three to four months, I would try to launch one or two new products, two new fragrances. Now, I would do that for a couple of reasons. One, it helps generate buzz and, and you can build promotion around those products. Plus, it just simply keeps your customers interested. You offer new products and that is something new for them to try. And then after some time of running these new products, you find out which ones tend to work and which ones are not working so well and you can eliminate those and add new ones to take their place. Now, I also wanna to briefly touch on coloring. Do you want to dye your candles or do you wanna leave them natural? You might see behind me, most of my candles on the shelves behind me are colored, but I also offer a lot of natural or non-dyed candles as well. That is completely optional, it's up to you. It's really gonna come down to your branding and what you're going for with your look and style. More to come on that later. However, that is optional and completely up to you. Now, I know there are a lot of other ingredients and other things to consider that might go into your candles. However, those are the core ingredients you should focus on when you're thinking about your candle business and when you're getting started. We did not talk about wicks because that's a whole nother conversation and it's really gonna vary by your vessel, your container you're using, and your wax, of course. But I do have a detailed wicking video called All About Wicks. You can check it on the channel and I will be doing an updated version of that video in the near future as well to talk about some other wicks not discussed in that video. Wicking is a topic all on its own and I'm very aware that it's part of making the candles, but I think the focus is pick your vessel, pick your wax, and pick your fragrances. Of course, you need to decide on the wicking once you have those three ironed out. Last thing I wanna talk about when it comes to supplies is the suppliers. My advice would to try to find a supplier that's relatively nearby to you 
and driving distance, for example. That will really help you starting out by saving on shipping costs because shipping costs to get things like jars and waxes can be very, very expensive. So one way to combat that is to find suppliers that are relatively close to home. If you can't do that, or you live in an area where there just are not a lot of local suppliers, then my next piece of advice would limit your suppliers to just one or two. Try to find one or two suppliers that can supply most of your needs, your jars, your waxes, and the oils that you like. That will help keep things simple for you and also consolidate your orders to help you save on money as well. So after you've completed all the above items, of course you need to start making your candles and test those candles. You're testing for both safety and performance. Again, I have other videos that dive into the details of how to test or my testing process. And then last but not least, if you are looking for feedback on your products other than just yourself or those who may live with you, I would consider starting a test group. This can be a small test group that you provide your candles to either free or at cost or even just for a wholesale markup. And that again is up to you, but this is an opportunity to get some other outside objective perspective and feedback on your products. I actually did not start doing this when I started early on. I introduced test groups later on in my business, but I do think it's a good option if you wanna consider it. Okay, so we've covered the basics that you need to start making your products. And again, you can find a lot more details and information on how to make candles in other videos and other resources. But the next step after making your products is how to market your products and brand yourself, your business. The first and most important thing I would say is to pick your target, define your niche. Now this is extremely important because while you can make products that sell to everyone, it's a lot easier to get started and a lot easier to grow if you can have a defined market. Who are you trying to sell to? What type of interest? What type of theme? Do you have a particular niche? Do you have something that you care more about and you can relate to other customers? So theme-based candles or just a certain design, a certain feel, a certain style to your product. Are you going for rich, bold colors? Are you going for something a little bit more natural? Are you going for more of a whimsical look? Really, what type of look and style are you going for? I think it's really important to decide what that is early on. You can change it later and you can add on to it later, but I think early on, it's really important to define that look and feel because it will help you establish your brand and it will help you create brand loyalty. Now, part of branding may include a logo or designs for labels or packaging. Now, if this is something you're not very comfortable or experienced with, or it's just not a skill set of yours, there are many freelancers out there that can help you with this or on services like Fiverr. Okay, so we've talked about defining your brand, defining your look, your feel, your niche. Now it's time to promote yourself, promote your business to generate some buzz. However, make sure that when you're generating buzz, you are still being real. You do not want to oversell and overhype your business or your products. You see a lot of new businesses talking about how amazing their candles are. They're using buzzwords like, my candles are amazing, the best candles you've ever used. Don't oversell yourself, don't overhype, because most of the people just see right through that and they see that as excitement for your own product. There are a ton of great candles and amazing candles and amazing products, and none of them are perfect. None of them, in my opinion, are the best. I like my candles, but I would never tell anyone here that my candles are way better than all of yours and they are the best candles in the world. Be real with your customers, the benefits of your products, or tell a story about your products, about your fragrances, about your business. These days, customers are just as interested in the why as they are the what. So I like to call this minding your peas. Focus on your purpose, not just your products, and your pricing. So I know you're excited and we all love our own products, but try to temper that excitement and focus on what's valuable to your customers. And it's great to be excited about our own products, about our own business, but try to show that in a different way. Instead of just showing pure excitement about your products and using buzzwords like amazing and best, start building a story. Talk about your products, talk about your fragrances. Let your customers in so that they can generate the excitement for themselves. Now, one final note about designing labels or working on packaging or product photography. What's nice is that you can work on all of those things while you're also working on the making. While you're becoming a better candle maker and making better products, you can also be designing and working on your branding. So they're not mutually exclusive. You don't have to work on one before the other. You can work on both of these at the same time. And the last thing I would do as far as promotion goes, if I was starting a business in 2022, is start a mailing list or a newsletter from day one. The moment you know you're gonna be starting a business and launching a product and launching a website, start your newsletter. And then make sure you continue to get signups from your website, from customers who purchase from you. Because that newsletter is a way to 
Tell your customers about new products. Let them know about new releases. Maybe ask them for feedback and reviews on the products that they previously purchased. An email list or newsletter is a great way to keep engagement with your customers and to offer new products. So in this last section, we're gonna talk about a few different things when it comes to the business side that I would be considering and I find important when starting your candle business. The first is the obvious, the basics, but they have to be mentioned. The few legal things that you should keep in mind. And I mention these because think of your business as a, a burger, as a cheeseburger. Those legal matters, those legal things that we all don't really like to focus on or worry about, they serve as the bun. Now all the meat, cheese, vegetables, toppings, all that good stuff in the middle, that is what's gonna satisfy your customers. That is going to be the meat, the heart of your business. However, those two pieces of bun keep it all together. If you just decide to ignore a few key legal ingredients, like the buns, then your whole burger can fall apart. At the very least, it can make things very messy. <laughs> so the legal portion of this, I really break into kind of four main categories. That is first, your business plan. And the business plan can actually be a lot of fun. And it doesn't have to be anything complicated or very long, it's just a plan for you to start and grow your business. This is a time to define your name, your target market, outline your goals for the next one, five, 10 years, for example. Creating a business plan can be fun, but also very, very effective. Now, I just briefly touched on it, but the second part of this is coming up with your business name. Of course, you need a name of some kind, it's totally up to you. And there are lots of creative names you can come up with, but just choose something that suits you and your business. You can change it later, but if you spend some time to get it right now, it'll make things a lot easier for you going forward. The third item is insurance. Once you know you're going to start selling candles, I would get insurance right away. It's pretty cost effective, especially for anyone running a business, but it's really not something that's negotiable. You need insurance to protect yourself, to protect yourself from some liability, and also just peace of mind. And then finally, required licenses and permits to operate your business wherever you're located. Now this will vary by location, so I can't give specific details, but usually this requires is something as simple as a business license and then a sales tax permit or sales tax license as well. But again, check with your local agencies on that. Now I do have a video with a more detailed breakdown on the business requirements and business steps to get started if you wanna check that out. All right, on to the meat and cheese and toppings. First thing I would do is get myself organized. Clutter disorganization, it all leads to anxiety. And feeling overwhelmed, stressed, and not knowing where to start or what to do will lead you to doing nothing, or at the very least, to being less productive. The fastest way to get buried is to already be standing in a hole. And working harder rather than smarter will just dig you a bigger hole. Get yourself back to ground level, one step at a time, and then, then you can hit the ground running. Now this next tip will depend on your situation and your space, but for me, I would try my hardest to get a dedicated workspace. Now, most of us starting off will start in our kitchen, for example, but if you have a room or a basement or somewhere or a workshop or whatever space you may have, if you can have a dedicated space, it will make your life a lot easier. Just because as you start growing, you can have more storage, you can spread out a little bit more, and you don't have to set as many things up and tear as many things down whenever you're going to make candles and then have to clean up your mess. So it could just make things a lot easier for you, but it's not a requirement. Now, the last thing I'll mention in terms of organization, making sure you're getting started on the right path, is to start tracking your inventory and really anything else that's worth tracking, inventory, expenses, your recipes, your customers, your orders, whatever it may be, start tracking all of that early on if you can. Now, if you've already started, you can backdate some of that, it's no problem, but the sooner you can get started on that, the less you will get behind and the easier it will be to manage going forward. Now, most of you that have been around on this channel for a while know that I use a product called uh, Crafty Base. It's a cloud-based software. Um, I will leave the information in the description below. I have an overview video if you wanna check it out. It is a very versatile, very powerful piece of software. They do have a few different plans depending on your needs or your wants. And there's a link in the description for a free trial if you wanna give it a shot before you invest in something. But it is very cost effective for what it does. Most inventory systems out there can cost an arm and a leg. We're talking thousands of dollars a month. And it manages my inventory. It tracks like my raw materials and my finished products. It tracks my expenses, my orders, my customers, uh, my recipes. I've got a video on recipes if you wanna check that out as well. Long story short, it's a great system that's kind of an all-in-one system that tracks a lot of things for me that before I was using it was a nightmare to track myself. And as you grow, it gets even more difficult. So my advice 
would be to start with something early on, some way of tracking all of that. It doesn't have to be crafty base. That's just what I use. I really, really like it. But you can track it in any system that you want, or you can track it manually with spreadsheets. But there's some really powerful benefits to using a software dedicated to help you do that. So again, if you're interested in more information on that, check in the description below for a link to the free trial, as well as videos uh, overviewing the product. The next thing I would do was to get more involved with my local community. I did not do this early on as well. Uh, in my current business. Uh, it actually took me some time before I decided to do that, but I wish I would have started that earlier. So if I were starting a brand new business in 2022, local community involvement would be one of my first priorities. This means I would go to my local chamber of commerce, talk with them, see what opportunities are out there, let them know who I am and what I do. That is one of your best connections you can have in your local town. I would also start looking for local events, pop-up shops and opportunities in the area that I might be able to sell my candles. It's a good way to start building a reputation and building brand awareness for you and your own local community, but also really start helping with word of mouth. It's one of the fastest ways to grow a small business is to start in your own community. Speaking of which, if you're also interested in pursuing wholesale accounts with small businesses, develop some wholesale kits and drop off samples with those kits to local retailers in your area or as far out as you want to go. I do have a fairly recent video where I talk about the difference between wholesale and white label and private label and give you some tips to starting wholesale accounts if you want to check out that video as well. But other than physically selling, what about your website? These days, every business really needs to have a website. Selling candles is no exception to that. So the question is, should you start on a website builder or e-commerce platform like Shopify, for example? or a marketplace like Etsy, or really any other option. This is a tough decision because it really depends on what you're going for and what your skill set is. For those that are relatively technical and think you could develop your website fairly quickly, and sites like Shopify make that pretty easy these days to do, but they do take some work. They take longer to set up than it does something like Etsy. But if that is something that's kind of in your comfort zone, then I would recommend going that route first. If that isn't something you really want to tackle early on and you feel more comfortable with something like Etsy where it's very easy and just an hour you can have your shop up and running and products listed, then I would recommend starting with Etsy. But if you start with Etsy, you can start building your other website in the back end. And then maybe once that website's done, you can do A-B testing between the two. So have your Etsy shop running, have your Shopify site, for example, running for three months or six months, see which one tends to do better for you. And then you can either leave them both running or decide to settle on one at that point. And on that note, once you're ready to start your website, make sure you have a plan for shipping before you launch. Shipping is usually the most complicated part of running an e-commerce store, whether that's through Etsy or your own website. So research and try to learn what you can about shipping products first. See what each platform has to offer as far as what carriers you can use to ship and how they can help you ship your products. Decide whether you wanna do free shipping versus calculated shipping. Think about what products you sell and maybe a few different box sizes that you should get to accommodate shipping those orders and so on. Again, that's another topic all on its own, but it's just something I would be prepared to handle when I decided to start my e-commerce website. And a little bonus tip here, for those of you who are getting started, especially if you don't have a website yet, but you are wanting to get started selling products, is you can do home parties. Think of the classic Tupperware parties, for example. What you could do is reach out to a few family members or friends and ask them to invite some of their friends and family over and just do a home party. So you bring your products, you set up at their location, and then you offer that host a kickback, either free product or maybe a percentage of commissions, whatever, you can work that out with them. But it is an opportunity to start getting your products in the hands of customers. And it's a very easy way to get started, very simple way to start selling your products. And the last thing that I would do, well, I guess in this case, there are more tips for you, are a few shameless plugs. <laughs> I've mentioned several other videos that I have made on this channel throughout the course of this video. I've talked about a video where I review common waxes that many beginners start with. I mentioned a video where I break down the basic requirements to starting a business. I talked about another video on an overview of Crafty Base that I use to manage all sorts of operational aspects of my business like inventory expenses, orders, and so on. I've mentioned a video about testing and a video about Wix. What I'm trying to say is I've mentioned a lot of videos discussing different aspects of things that we've talked about today. If any of that interests you or you think any of that might be helpful for you, my next tip would be to simply subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Once you subscribe, go to the channel, click on videos, and you can browse all the different video topics we've talked about so far, but also keep in mind that there is many more coming. Next, I mentioned starting a newsletter for your customers. Well, I have a link to a new newsletter that I'm starting as well that's in the description below. It is geared towards candle makers. Now, there's no current content at the time of posting this video because it is brand new. When I post new videos or I have new resources or helpful insight or anything that I think might help other candle makers, 
I can send that to you directly. There's no cost, it's not spam, it's just a way for you to get more information about candle making in the candle industry. If you're interested, that link's in the description. Feel free to sign up if you'd like to. And then lastly, if you're interested, please feel free to follow me on my other social channels for inspiration and a good time. That sounded weird. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and so on. Those links are in the description below as well. I hope you found this video helpful and inspirational. Now get out there and start your candle business. I will see you all next time. Thanks. Thank <music> you.